Hi guys, I'm Rohan Kamath. I graduated from Stanford in 2013 with a Masters in Computer Science, after which I worked at Amazon for about three years as a software engineer. I currently work at Microsoft as a program manager on the Office 365 Core Security PM team. The scope of breadth that this job offered me without sacrificing technical depth is what really excited me about this role. So Rohan, it looks like you've had a long day. Yes, it has been a long day. Actually, I didn't, it, it was fun. I didn't realize how time flew. I'm happy that time flew. Yes. Um, so, tell me a little bit about you. Tell me something that I don't already know. Well, I'm sure you have already seen my resume and uh, read all the feedback. Yes. I bet you didn't know that I can uh, identify over 10,000 uh, species of birds by sight wow. and 1,000 by sound. Now that's the first. My uncle and my son both enjoy the birds here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, tell me a little more about this. It's very interesting. I started birding when I was six years old. I saw a peregrine falcon uh, stoop into a valley and kill a pigeon midair. I was fascinated ever since. I photographed hundreds of species and contributed these photos to schools, colleges, uh, galleries. Photography is actually secondary. Uh, primarily, I love to watch them and observe them. My wife has developed a keen sight of birds too. Uh, it's actually, we have actually become a team. And uh, yeah, that's what we do in the weekends. We go to the Pacific Northwest and we bird. Do you know about the snow geese we see here in the winter? I had read a poem as a child that I learned by heart. Could I recite it for you? Oh yes, definitely. The geese flew on. I have never seen them again. Maybe I will. Someday. Somewhere. Maybe I won't. It doesn't matter. What matters is that when I saw them, I saw them as through the veil, secretly, joyfully, clearly. Wow, that's a really nice poem. I've never heard that before. I'm actually very familiar with the snow geese. They're, back, they're actually the harbinger of winter winds. Similarly, we had a really beautiful bird back in the Western Ghats in India, called the Oriental Kingfisher, whose arrival was more sure shot indicator for the approaching monsoon. I've never met anyone with so much passion and knowledge about their hobby. So tell me, are you this passionate about tech? Maybe just a tad less than I'm about birds. I do generally like tech and it's been an integral part of my life, right after birds that is. <laughs> right. So, let's dive into some design problems, shall we? Yes, definitely. Oh, come on. Okay, Ryan, let's design a parking system for Microsoft buildings. Okay. One of the pain things for me is in the morning when I get to work, especially if I'm late, is trying to find a parking spot. The garages have three levels. One, two, three. And unless I get here early in the morning, I have to go round and round in circles to find a parking spot. And it doesn't ideally put me in a very good mood to start my working day. Okay. So let's list out the obvious solutions. Things that have been implemented in malls and shopping complexes around. Then we can optimize um, things for Microsoft. The most common one we see in the, uh, at the entrance is a digital board that gives you an idea of the free spots available at the parking lot. This definitely saves your time as you can head directly to the target floor. The other one we see quite commonly is the numbered parking system where each person coming in parks at the numbered spot. This is quite flawed though because it assumes on the assumption that people enter once in the morning and exit in the evening. So let's now try and optimize this for Microsoft. Can I go ahead and make an assumption that every Microsoft building has their own parking garage and I can assume that they are typically 90% full on any workday? Sure, that sounds like a fair assumption. Let's also throw in a couple of clauses. 
Design two solutions for me. One where you have unlimited resources and the other where you're constrained on both time and budget. Okay, well if there are no resource constraints, I can go a little nerdy. We can have sensors or maybe even use computer vision to determine a list of available spots in the garage at any given time. We can then display this information on a large screen on every level so that I know specifically where to head to. This can be further optimized if we display this information at the entrance and make people stop, select a spot and collect a ticket for that specific spot so that we avoid race conditions inside the garage. The downside to this is that it's an over complicated system to solve a simple problem. You will need a tech support team to service this frequently. Personally, I feel the resource constraints help more and provide for more optimized solutions. It can be something as simple as having a sensor so we can have a simple green light above each parking spot that indicates whether it is occupied or available. There's no complex tech here. Troubleshooting and maintenance is isolated to independent spot and failure don't bring the whole system to a halt. The downside to this is that there will be an initial human effort to install each sensor and light but that's one time cost on a low maintenance system that will save employee time and hence the company dollar. So I'm sure Satya won't mind signing a check if you pitch it to him like that. <laughs> yeah, well, this is actually a really interesting approach. Most people tend to jump to building apps and really overcomplicate matters. But I like your clarity of thought on this and how you have listed all the pros and cons. It's great. Why overcomplicate a simple problem? Apps are not the solution to everything. Sure. Hey guys, so we just saw an enactment of my interview with Microsoft that the Are You Buzzing team has actually filmed. Um, what happened after this was that the GPM who was my would-be hiring manager brought in the leads for the two teams who were actually interested in hiring me. We sat down and had a talk about what the roles and responsibilities would be on each of the team, what specific problems that they're working on, the technologies uh, that I would be working on if I did join their respective teams, and overall what my scope as a PM on that team would be. A quick tip on how to describe yourself in an interview. Be genuine, be honest. Tell them why you're an interesting person. Don't recite your resume, they've already read it. Don't go through a checklist of your skills. Tell them a story about yourself. If you can come across as an interesting person in the first five minutes, trust me, you'll have their undivided attention for the rest of the time. A hiring manager is looking for someone who's gonna be a good fit on their team. Someone they can work well with. Technical skills can be taught. Acknowledge your weaknesses, but demonstrate a willingness to learn. And most importantly, make sure you're the guy they remember who stood out from the crowd at the end of the day. In short, make your About Me memorable. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Do hit the like and share button if you enjoyed it. And hit the subscribe button for more awesome content from Are You Buzzing?